Hi and welcome back to another Modern Mini video. In this video today I'm going to be changing the calipers, the discs and the pads on a Mini R55. This car's 11 years old now. Um, I changed these discs about six years ago and they're um, needing changed again. And also because the car's ageing I'm just going to change the calipers. I've done the fronts, I didn't film that, but the fronts are very similar to doing the rears, except you don't have handbrake cables on them. So, first of all, we need to jump in the car and um, release the uh, tension off the handbrake cable. Right, jumping into the car, what you want to do is get some pry tools and pry off your handbrake gator. Once you've got that prized off, now be careful because these clips are only plastic and they are easily broken. So once you get into your handbrake um, gator and get it off, this is your adjusting nut here. A 10mm deep reach is the easiest way to get into it. And what you want to do is just wind it back so that the cables slack because you're going to have to pop off your cables to put the new caliper on. So. The tool I use is a 10mm deep reach, so if I just wind that off just now, um, that'll take the tension off it. Now you don't need to undo the nut totally, basically you just want to slacken off the cable. Maybe a little bit more. Right, that should be enough, so we'll jump back outside and um, pop off the handbrake cable. Prior to um, starting this job, I gave all the areas that I'm going to be removing a squirt with some um, release oil. This GT85, that's blooming good stuff that, I must say. So basically, you want to, you want to squirt some oil here because that's where you're retaining clip is for the handbrake cable and also at the back of it just so that it helps it slide off and um, any other nuts and bolts that are exposed it wouldn't do any harm to give them a squish either so once you've given that a squish that'll greatly assist the sur clip coming out um, the other side I had to put a different sur clip in it because it was completely rotten so this side as you can see after a good dose comes out no problem save that because you don't get that with the caliper when you buy it so once you've undone that your handbrake cable will pop out and that's it free from the caliper so the next step we want to get the caliper the caliper and the disc off the car To release the, the caliper itself, it's two 13mm bolts. And these come out really easily. Once you get the caliper bolts out, the caliper, well, Pries away, and that's it off there. <clears throat> Next, you want to get your carrier off, your caliper carrier off. And I'm just checking these sliders, these slider pins feel fine, really. Move nice and freely, but I'll be um, relubricating these as well. You can also pop your pads out at this point as well. That inside pad looks unevenly worn. And the back of the disc isn't that clever either. Which would indicate it's probably been slightly sticky, that caliper. So, once you get your pads in that out, it's a 16mm, 16mm socket. 
stick it into the back of the carrier and then just undo it. I'll be the carrier off. I'm going to give this a clean up with a wire brush just to get all the rust and dirt off it and um, that'll make it nice and clean for putting back on. It's also a good idea to renew your brake fitting kit here. Unfortunately I don't have a, a spare brake fitting kit. I thought I did have a set in the spares um, so I'm going to be reusing these these are stainless steel anyway, so they're in pretty good condition. So I'll get away with um, cleaning them up, reusing them. Next, you want to get the, the disc off. It's a 50mm um, Torx a T50, I should say, not a 50mm, a T50 Torx. And you want to get that off Yeah. Now, I've already pre slackened, pre -slackened this when um, the handbrake was on. So this should come off fairly easy. Also, the last time I'd done these brakes, I copper greased the, the threads on that, just so that it would come off easy. And as you can see there, that brake looks kind of naff, so um, yeah, it's getting changed. The back of that disc's badly scored. The outside's not too bad, but the inside, that's uneven. It's quite bumpy. So that's getting binned. Also what I tend to do when I'm in this area of the car, is I give the back of the hub a clean with a wire wheel, wire brush and also the, the threads on the wheel bearing because you never know when you're going to do the, the wheel bearing on these and if you keep the threads nice and clean that will obviously aid the nuts coming out at a later date but um, touch wood all the years I've owned um, R56s or 55s in this case I've never had to do a wheel bearing on front and rears on the R50 but never on this car yet so it's good going anyway I'll give that a clean up off camera and when I come back we'll get the caliper fitted right I've given the caliper a little clean up here just with the wire brush so now I'm going to pop these sliders out and as you can see they're still fully grease but it's actually a silicon lube uh, there's the stuff there, that's what I use. So I'm just going to pop some more silicon on it. Just to keep it lubricated up. Um, some people use um, copper slip or copper grease in these pins. Uh, me personally, I wouldn't recommend it because um, from my experience the copper eats the rubbers and it just gets dry after a while. So I always use uh, silicon grease or red rubber brake grease, just whatever. But that stuff's always worked well for me. Right, that's say pins um, lubricated and they're well free, no seizure on them at all. So next, what I want to do is um, pinch this caliper off. I'll pinch it off um, 
just up here. I'll pinch it off with the um, clamp. And that'll limit the fluid loss from it. And um, undo the bolt. I've already cracked that off when it was on the caliper. So that should come off fairly easy. And here's the new one here. Ready to wind on. So I'll just get that to the side there. So that it's um, ready to go straight on. Um, spanner. It's obviously not quite slack enough. There we go. Now be careful with these because it's easy to round the, the nut. So if it's tight when you first put your spanner on it, give it a little bit of spray lube and let that soak in. Um, if need be, get more grips on it to get it cracked off to start with. Right, so that's that off, and now we just want to wind the, the new one in. When you're doing these pipes, ideally you want to wind the caliper onto the pipe and not the pipe round the caliper because you'll just put undue strain on the pipe and then it'll probably end up bursting. That's the caliper on, or the pipe reconnected to the caliper. That's the old one, it can go in the bin. Right, next you want to get the, the brake disc on, I'll need to go and grab that. Right, I've got the disc now, so prior to getting the disc on, this is a little grub screw that holds the disc in place. I'll give that a little cutting, and on the inside of the hub there, where the thread's going, and I'll just give it a little splat of copper grease on the on the hub itself. That makes the disc easier for coming off in the future. So here's the new disc here. Just stick that on. this little grub screw in. Right, that's that one now. So what I want to do is get the caliper carrier back on.
there's a torque setting for these um, so if you refer to your Haynes manual for that that'll tell you I'll obviously torque all these up once it's um, built up right next you want to get your your pads in now there should be a sensor on this wheel but I've uh, I've done away with it and I don't have any lights on in the car either um, I've tricked it because I think the sensors are a waste of time so if we just pop the pads in place I like to just put a little bit of copper strip on the bottoms, bottom of the feet here, just to um, help them slide. Right, that's same in. And now we want to put the caliper over it. Like so. Right, I'll need to grab the new bolts because when you're changing the caliper, you're always better using new bolts. If you're going to use the old bolts, pop some new thread lock on it. But I've got new bolts in the garage. I'll just quickly grab them. Right, nice new bolts here. Yeah. So we'll just fit these in. Right, that's um, the caliper all bolted back in. Sometimes when you get new discs, um, they'll have a film on them, so you want to clean them off. This, these brakes didn't have any film on them, but I'm going to give them a clean anyway, just to um, take any contaminants that may, may be on it off. That's just a little spray with brake cleaner and then just wipe it around the disc. I always paint my centres. Sometimes discs come painted. And these ones didn't. So um, I painted them. And these discs are Delphi and um, so are the pads. That's what I've always used on these cars and um, they seem hard wear. Right now to um, reconnect the handbrake cable. It's worth giving this a little clean as well with a wire brush just so that it's um, the, the slats are clear for the circ clip to go back into. That's it. Just a little bit tight there. So next we can get the circ clip in. Right, that's that clip on now. So what we need to do next is um, obviously bleed the brakes. 
So if I whip off the bleed nipple there, I'll connect my little bottle to it and um, crack off that bleed nipple. That's the bleeding kit connected. It's connected into the master cylinder and I've put some pressure on it there. So next we'll move to the back of the car and bleed the brakes. Right, moving on to the back now. The system's under pressure. So I'll just um, bleed these off. Now you should start to see, I don't know if it'll pick up on camera, um, the air bubbles coming out on that. It's certainly coming out at the bottom there. And that's it starting to come out, out the tube now. And that looks relatively bubble free, a couple of bubbles still. Yep, I think that'll do it. One little bubble there. So we'll just lock this off. This is far better than getting somebody to press the brakes every every few seconds. Plus you can do it yourself. Right, that's the brake bleeding kit disconnected. So what I'll do now is I'll just top up the, the fluid in the reservoir. Right, that's the brake fluid reservoir topped up. So now I'm just going to give the pedal just a few pumps just to centre up the pistons. And now that that's done, I can move over to the handbrake and I'll quickly adjust that cable up. Right, that's the handbrake um, adjusted back up again. If you just give it a few, a few turns just to get it working, that seems fine. Handbrake's off. I'm now going to go out and check that the discs are um, turning freely. And then I'll come back in, pull the handbrake up and make sure that the discs are locked. So if we jump outside, we can quickly check. Right, that disc turns freely. And so does that one. So if I pull the handbrake back up, that's locked. And that's locked as well. Happy days. I think um, we'll call that job done. I hope this has helped you. Um, if you want to see how the job's done, um, it's an easy job that more or less anybody can tackle at home, even just with basic tools. So, guys, if you've made it this far, thanks for watching, and I'll see you again.